was 36 degrees with a northwest wind of 20 miles an hour, making a wind chill factor of 10 degrees. It's now 7.45. It wasn't my fault, but it doesn't matter. We were late. We missed him. Let's just go home. No, 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 no. It'll work. It'll work. It's we'll not grab. It'll work. It'll work. We'll grab just her. Just her. Get there. You just be quiet, you cooperate, nothing's gonna happen to you.
watch your hand. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. How long are we going to be here? If everyone cooperates, we should be out of here in a couple hours. We picked your name out of a hat, Eunice. <laughs> we got it out of a directory. All right, all right. You just be quiet, okay? Now, look, we're just going to have to be patient. We're going to have to sit here and wait until we get the money, okay? When will that be? Well, as soon as we get a hold of your husband at the bank. You better, you better get going. He is not an easy man to reach. You see, he's, he's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that, Eunice. Okay, but it's out of our hands now. What do you mean? It's, uh, it's up to the other guys. Other, what other guys? Well, you see, there's a couple other guys doing the negotiating. Now, all we got to do is wait. What other guys are you talking about? There aren't any other guys. Yeah, no, there ain't no other guys. Huh? <laughs> hey, you make the call, huh? You tell him to get as much money as he can and bring it to a gas station at 66th and Lindale. 66th and Lindale. Got it? Yeah. Okay. The car's in the garage. Uh, Betty, keep trying to get Eunice, will you? I'm going to go out, and I'll be back in half an hour or so. Okay. Thank you very much. Grover State Bank. Hello, uh, I, I'd like to speak with Mr. Cronholm. I'm sorry, sir, I just saw him leave the building. Would you like to speak to his secretary? Um, uh, no, ne never mind, never mind. This is dumb, it ain't gonna work, it's not gonna work. Listen, you just tell me something, will you? How come you and your husband didn't go to work together this morning? We never do. What do you mean you never do? You work at the bank, don't you? No. No, I, I don't work at the bank. I'm a nurse. A nurse? Yes. I, I've been in charge of uh, health services at the Bethel College. I've taught psychiatric and surgical nursing. I've, I've never worked at the bank. Well, does one, uh, one of your daughters work at the bank? Well, both of them have. I is one of them named after you? No, neither of them is Eunice.
You know something, Eunice? You're lucky. I mean, you're lucky you're not with one of those other guys. I, I think one of them's a sadist. I mean, he'd have to be to do some of the things he does. Of course, I'm not such a nice guy myself, Eunice. I sometimes think I should see a psychiatrist. I can be pretty ugly. I can be pretty ugly. She hasn't been in today. All right. Thank you very much. Have you been able to reach Eunice? No, I haven't. But I'll keep trying. All right. Thank All you. Right. Oh. oh, since I don't know your name, would it be all right if I just kind of made one up for you? Why don't I, why don't I just call you Bill, OK? Why not? That's good. And I don't have to feel as though I'm talking to the wall. I don't get you. How can you be so calm? Well, if I'm calm, it's... Well, I feel strongly that, that, that God is in control of the situation I'm in. He'll take care of me. Goody for you. Mr. Cronholm, please. Listen, I gotta talk to him now. Gentlemen, the next thing on the agenda in our meeting uh, is a matter of small business loans. This afternoon, we want to consider a number of small business loan applications. I'm sorry, Mr. Cronholm, but there's someone who insists on talking to you on the telephone. I told him you were in conference, but he says it's urgent. Excuse me, gentlemen. Gunnar Cronholm speaking. We got your wife. Now get all the money you can and deliver it to a phone booth at 66 in Lindale. Please, please, would you repeat the instructions? Gentlemen, I have a problem. Eunice, my wife, has been kidnapped. Will you get Bob Anderson in here, please? Sure. Bob, Eunice has been kidnapped. I'd had a call from abductors. Call the operator and ask for the FBI. Yes, give me the FBI, please. Dear God, how could you let this happen? We've tried. We've tried to serve you in all the areas where we've been given abilities in. We've been through so much heartaches before. And then you let me have Eunice. Oh, dear Lord, how can you do this? How can you do this to me? Get through? Oh, uh, yeah. What do you say? Well, I don't, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I... I called him, like you said, and I, I told him. I, well, I hung up. I got scared. I don't even know if he heard me. You <laughs> kid. Uh, what's the matter with you, huh? I said you have to make a simple phone call, and you blow it. Idiot.
think you could clean that up and make us a pot of coffee? Hot shot. Uh, please, I need to go to the... I need to go to the bathroom. Somebody? I need to go to the bathroom, please. Why? Hold it. Let me get the light. All right. Oh, okay. Please don't take off your blindfold. Just yell when you're done. You want to stay alive, you don't touch a scarf, you understand? I told her that. And don't take all day. Did you at least remember to bring some beer? Yeah, it's in the car. Thank you. Turn off the set. Mom. Yeah. I have something to tell you. Yeah, so what's the matter? Oh, Mom. It's it's something about Uni. Yeah. Uni's been kidnapped. No. Kidnapped. Well, listen, I uh I call the other fellow Bill, so I don't feel like I'm talking to a wall. What would you like me to call you? You can call me Jerry if you want. Okay, Jerry. Hey, hot shot. Go get drunk. Hey, Eunice. Guess what I just heard over the radio? Uh, there's cops all over the place. One of them's been shot. Oh, dear Lord. How did that ever happen? Hey, hey, Why don't, do they do sh, things listen, like Take it that? easy. Don't get all excited, well, huh? How did it happen? I don't know. I, one of our guys must have ran, ran a red light, and, and a cop probably stopped him, and then he got excited and shot him. Was he hurt badly? Well, they don't know yet. Oh, that's terrible. Terrible. Would you like a beer, Eunice? Jan, thank you. My father, please bless this. Oh, God, dear, dear God, I beg of you, keep her safe. Keep her well. Don't let her flu get worse. God, my father, don't let those men torture her. May we hear soon. Let contact be made. May the demands be such that we can meet them. Amen. Uh, it's only instant, but, uh, well, it's coffee anyway. Oh, I thought I smelled coffee. And be careful, it's hot. Oh, thank you. Took care of it. Uh, 
You still get a new car out of it. You mean you wrecked it? Mm, mm -mm. No, I mean, uh, you know, once the FBI are through with it, they'll, well, they'll pry open the trunk and, you well, know. There won't be much left after that. Huh? Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I don't understand you. I mean, you're not nervous. <laughs> I'm a wreck, and you're just as calm as you can be. Well, it isn't myself. I'd be very upset if I weren't a Christian. You know, many years ago, I found out who God really is and what he wants to do for people, for me. He wanted happiness for me more than I wanted it for myself. And all he asks is that I allow him to control my life. He wanted me to believe that he loved me so much that he sent his son, the Lord Jesus, to show us how to live and love other people. In fact, he loved us so much that he allowed his son to die for our sins. And now all we have to do is accept that fact and ask God to forgive us our sins and take over our lives and make us into the kinds of people he wants us to be. Sounds easy. Oh, it is. It is. That's why it's for anybody. Oh, God, work in his heart. Even through this, may he come to know you. Well, why don't you tell me about yourself? Are you married? No. Well, I was. Uh, I'm not now, though. Mm, I see. OK, gang. It's nap time. <gasps> what are we doing? Well, thanks to you, we're going to spend the night right here. Give me a beer. <sighs> hey, 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 that's mine. What about me? Get your own blanket. your own beer. <laughs> Kids got guts. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, Eunice. Gentlemen, we've come into this case on the assumption that it is a kidnapping. Gunner received a phone call from someone saying they had Eunice. And, uh, to collect as much money as he could and deliver it to a station. Well, the rest of it was unintelligible. Well, all I ask is the <clears throat> safe return of my wife, and the FBI has promised not to interfere. We, we are waiting further instructions. Uh, we, we will meet there. Demands, and um, we will follow instructions. Eunice, I love you, and we're all offering prayers for you. Eunice? Eunice? Rise and shine. Hey, come on. Come on! Look, I'm gonna let you take the scarf off and go into the bathroom and wash up, okay? Come on, get up. Now look, when you're through, I'm gonna put a different blindfold on you. But look, while you're in there, do me a favor, will you? And don't look around, okay? 
All right. Let me know when you're through. All right, don't take all day, huh? Shut your eyes tight, and don't look. All right, right here, right here. I'm gonna put the new blindfold on you. You just relax. Okay. How's that, huh? A lot better than the scarf, eh? Huh? Good girl, that's a girl. You can go sit down now. When they call, you should be prepared to meet their demands at once. I intend to. I'll go myself, of course. It has risk. Yes. We would recommend that you allow one of our men to take care of it. Our men are trained to react. But Clay, she's my wife. I'm willing to take the risk. I have no right to ask you or anyone else to endanger yourselves doing what I should do. Gunner, it's not only the risk. But Clay, remember, she is my wife. Gunner, it's just not safe. Now, we have an agent here on duty, Dick Donovan. He's very close to your build and similar in height. We think he'd be a good double for you. Gunner, why don't you think about it? All right. Why don't we talk a little bit, huh, Jerry? Sure. You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm uh, from the South. From the South? Oh, well, tell me about it, about your family. What about your mother? Well, I don't know. It's, it's too good for, for my dad, I guess. Uh, he was drunk all the time and got pretty mean when he got drunk. I think you'd better tell me some of the points of your life I'd be expected to know. All right. Where shall I begin? Tell me about Eunice's background. You mean where she grew up and went to school? Yes, but farther back than that. You know, I've never met a woman like you before, though. I mean, most women be be crying and hollering, they'd be so scared, but well, you're not. I'm sure glad you're not. I can't take the credit for that. I told you why that is, Jerry. Yeah. Did I tell you Eunice is the youngest? Of seven children. You know, uh, uh, I had a very good mother, too. She's still living. Yeah. Mom used, used to get along real well. We used to do a lot of stuff. We used to go down and, and get shrimp right out of the water. We, oh. we lived on the Gulf. Boy, yeah. that sure was good. I, <laughs> I wish I had some now. I bet. All right, we gotta move. The owner's been nosing around. I don't know if he's hip yet, but he's gonna be back in a couple of minutes. Grab her stuff, we gotta go. Come on, Eunice, we're going bye-bye. Right this way, come on. First? Come on, yeah, we got it, we got it, let's go. Oh, I can get carbon monoxide in there. It's just for a little... Mother, don't... don't. 
Don't just for a little while. We gotta make a phone call. Come on, just for a little while. Please don't. Come on, just be quiet for a little while. Oh, don't, please, don't, don't. It's not that bad in there. I, I rode around it myself for a while. It's safe. There's, there's plenty of air you won't smother. Okay. I'll die. Oh, please don't. Will you take me out soon? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll open it up in just about ten minutes or so. Don't worry. Cronholm residence. No, I'm sorry. There's been no more news about Eunice. What's the matter? It's busy. I'm going to try again. I'm sorry, but we have to keep this line open on orders of the FBI. Hang up, Greg. No, there's nothing more we can tell you. We've got to keep this line open. Hang up, hang up. Come on. Yeah. All right, copy this number down, will you? Come on. All right, all right. 483. 483. I'm sorry. We've just got to keep that line open. Hello. Uh, just one second, please. Ruth, yeah. for you. All right. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is uh, is this Ruth? Uh, yes. Who is this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a friend of Eunice. Uh, Eunice. Yeah. Can you get a hold of Gunner? Uh, yes. I think so. Okay. All right, now you tell him to be in your, at your house in exactly half an hour. We'll call back then. And remember, no, uh, remember, no police, no guns, no nothing. Okay. Gunner Cronholt speaking. Hey, Gunner. Are the police with you? How's my wife? Oh, no, no. Hey, listen, don't worry. Eunice is fine. Uh, naturally, she's a little scared, you understand? <laughs> now, but otherwise, she's all right. And now, listen, don't worry, huh? You just follow instructions carefully, and everything's going to be all right. I'll do everything you say, but how do I know that... You have my wife. I'm going to ask you a test question. 
to make sure I'm dealing with the right person. Yeah, well, go ahead, ask it. We'll give you the answer next time we talk to you. All right, now you listen to me. You go to a phone booth on 66th, west of Lindale in Minneapolis. You'll be there at 8 o'clock, and we'll give you further instructions then. <laughs> it's it's 7.20 now. All right, now what's the big test question, huh? The, the question, ask Eunice, ask my wife, what we did... Okay, okay, what you did. After the opera, our last night in Rome. In Rome. Okay. Now listen to me, Gunner. You listen good now. I want no police, no guns, no nothing. You understand me? Okay. What's the matter with you? I'm trying to listen on the phone. I didn't know what you Dick. God keep you. <laughs> okay, hot shot. You wanted something to do? Ask her about Rome. Mrs. Cronholm, your husband wants to know if you're okay. Well, we did, but he wants he wants us to ask you a test question so that he knows you're all right. What is it? What is the test question? What did you do the last night in Rome that was special? We went to the opera. Yeah, yeah, we know that. What else did you do? We went out for pizza. Pizza. Well, that must be it. <laughs> You're getting good. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're late, Gunner Cronholm. What did my wife say about Rome? Yeah, she said you went out for pizza after the opera. When can I talk to her? Uh, you, never mind about that, huh? Remember, no police, no guns. No, no, of course not. All right. Now, listen, you follow these instructions, and you follow them carefully. You understand me? Listen, I'll do whatever you say. Now, you go to, uh, go to the Hub Shopping Center. Now, there's a phone booth located at the corner of 66th and Nicolette. Okay. We know how long it's going to take you to get there. when it gets to the booth. home here all right now open your jacket and and, and and unbutton your shirt and whatever you got on and and walk outside the booth now hold it all back to prove that you're not wearing a radio mic or, or something like that
basically. Okay, we want $400,000 in fives, tens, and twenties. That's impossible. The vault is closed. The most I can get is 200000 uh, uh, wait a minute, just a minute. Look, they can't get $400,000. They can only get two because the banks are closed. Come on, please, let's take the $200,000. I don't want to keep this going. I just want to get it over with, all right? All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, we'll take the two now. Now, listen, this is what you do. Get the money and be back there at 6.30 tomorrow night. Now, now no tricks, no tricks. Just do everything like you're supposed to and you'll get your wife back. Come on, let's go. How did it go? They called it off. Well, what do you mean they called it off? What went wrong? They were very suspicious. I supposed to meet them at the same place at 6.30 tonight. Oh, no. They wanted $400,000. They told me what denominations. I told them the most we could raise was two. gonna say she wants to go home so do I you can't stay here all night you know where are we gonna go we gotta move early I got us a room at the motel Sleep at all? It's up to you. You want to sleep? Sleep. Mrs. Cronholm? Uh, Mrs. Cronholm, you gotta wake up. We gotta move. Step up.
No. No. You can't go near that door. Oh, yeah. You stay right here. What do you want? I'm here for Brian's paper bag. We, uh, we got radio here. Would you like to listen to it? <laughs> Yeah, I would. I sure would. Uh, anything special? I mean, I, I don't know the radio stations around here. Uh, CCO, try CCO. That's uh, 83. It, is that it? I, maybe you ought to do it yourself. I, you know, I just don't know. Him. Uh, here, but, uh, not right here. Uh, do you mind if I listen to this? No, no, not at all. Go ahead. Get you anything? Water that will make people hunger and thirst for righteousness. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It was Eric. Would anyone like some more chicken? Listeners, to pray that 
God will intervene so that Mrs. Cronholm will soon be reunited with her loved ones. Did you hear that? Thousands of people are praying for me. Isn't that something? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. get out of here, when I get my share of the money, I, I'm going to give a lot of it to good causes. Oh, that's good, Cherry. Do you have any particular ones in mind? No. Well, I, I haven't given that much thought yet. Hey, gang. Shout time, huh? You deserve a break today. You know what we heard on the radio? Mm. Thousands of people are praying for Mrs. Cronholm. Oh, yeah? That's terrific. Praying for the wrong one. Hey, Eunice, listen, I want you to start thinking about something you can write in a note to your husband. You can say anything you want. Then I got something I want you to write. for giving her to me and for all she means to me. Lord Jesus, it's in your hands completely. Your will must be done. Whatever happens now, it will be as you planned it. Thank you, Jesus. home here. Hey, Gunner. Nice talking to you again. Listen, you go to the phone booth on Portland in 78. Open the directory to Cranholm. You'll find your instructions there, huh? I've got it. Yeah, it's a pay station on the corner of 76th and Portland. Right. to put the money in the trunk, leave the key in the trunk, 
I have a list of instructions as to where to go. Awesome cocktail. Ginger ale. Eagle One, we have some trouble here. An unauthorized TV car is interfering. We're taking it out. 
Radio silence will be maintained to protect the package. Got a current home seeking. Now look, I want to know what's going on here. There are cops all over the place. Now I thought we had a deal. We do, we do. Somebody must have misunderstood. What should I do now? Well, what about the cops? I can lose them. I don't know what they're doing. Now listen, if there are any cops around, the deal is off. Do you understand? Look, I know I can lose them. All right. Okay, now this is your last chance. Now there's a McDonald's hamburger stand on Highway 13, west of 35W. Now you go there and you wait for me to give you another call, you understand? And no tricks this time, no cops. Home speaking. All right, now listen to me. Take the money out of the trunk and, and put it up in the front seat with you, all right? Now, now drive south on 35W. Wait, wait. All right, drive south on, on 35W till you get to Frontage Road. Now, now, take Frontage Road and, and you'll come to an old metal bridge, all right? Now, take the money and drop it at the edge of the bridge and, and then just get out of there. What about my wife? When do I get her back? Look, if you do your part of the bargain, you'll, you'll get her back at daybreak. Where? How? Just don't mess around and you'll get her back at daybreak. <laughs>
Well? You should have your wife back soon. Well, thank God. What did they say? They said they release her at daybreak. We'd better get over to your place as quickly as possible. I'll tell you about it on the way. I'm ready. You, uh, get on the floor of the back seat this time. I'm so tired. care what happens anymore. I know, I know. Bill, Bill, let Jesus handle your life. You know, the Bible says, love even those who persecute you. Oh, Bill, I care about you. I really care about you. Give your life to Jesus. He'll give you a new life, Bill. Oh, oh Bill, Don't preach to me. Gunner. Yes? Why don't you get some rest? There's nothing we can do till morning. You're right. Thank you, Dick. Just wake up. Come on, we gotta move. Everything go all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Did you get it? I got it. Uh, does that mean that I can go home again? I can go home now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it, Eunice. Hey, my friend, take Mrs. Crown home to the living room, huh? All right. This way. Hey, come back in here. I want to talk to you.
We did it, huh? Yeah. Listen, I, uh, I uh, gotta leave you for a while, okay? I, a few things I gotta pick up. All right. If I don't come back, get rid of her. So long, hot shot. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, I thought you'd left me. Oh. Had to go out to the garage for a minute. I, I, um, uh, Jerry, I asked God to get me home by six o'clock tonight. You think I'll get home by six o'clock tonight? I sure hope so. What? What, Bonnie? I, uh... What? I bought something this morning. A, a radio. A real nice one. Uh, I, I thought maybe you'd like to listen to it. I, oh. Just turn it on. Yeah, yes. Okay, uh... Just tune it that way. And, uh... Whatever station you oh, want. Oh, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and now a news bulletin on the Kronholm kidnapping. Police have picked up a suspect they think was involved in the abduction of Eunice Kronholm last Friday morning. Jerry! Jerry, did you hear that? Jerry, you, Jerry, they picked someone up. The radio says they picked up someone they think was involved in the kidnapping. You, you think it was Bill? Here's an update on the news bulletin on the Cron Home case. The suspect has been identified as Fred Watson. The FBI said that Watson had been under surveillance and that they felt it was best to take him into custody at this time. Mrs. Cronholm is still missing, although the ransom was paid last night. Oh, man. Oh, man. What am I going to do? Why'd I ever let myself get into this mess? How am I going to get out? I'm sorry, I... I'm, I'm sorry we put you through all this. I, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it from the beginning. I, I don't know what to do. I can't decide. I, I gotta go and think. I gotta go and sit down and think. I don't think it'll do us any good to be here together. I know. I, I know it. I, I'm gonna be coming around here any minute. I, I know that too. I, I just don't know what to do, that's all. 
Why don't you let me go now, Jerry? I'd like to. I, I'd like to get out of this whole mess myself. Then why don't you? I don't know. They got me either way. Then I think you ought to let me go right now, Jerry. No, no, wait. I mean, well, there are workmen over there. I, I don't want them to see you. Maybe we ought to wait 20 minutes. Well, I, uh, I'll just get on my coat and boots while I'm waiting. Still working over there. Home residence. No, no, nothing yet. You, you might as well take off the, the blindfold. Uh, don't make no difference anymore, anyway. Here's your blanket. Uh, there's a, a superette down the road about a mile on, on the right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go now, Jerry. Maybe I, I ought to go with you. Oh, no, no, that would be a mistake. Mm, be less conspicuous if we, if we go alone. Yeah, I guess so. Jerry, remember this. I forgive you, and God loves you. Right back there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please. Could you tell me where I'm at, please? This is a burger dairy store. What's the address? Road 30 West. Road 30 what? Road 30 West. Road 30 West. Burger dairy store. Thank right. You. Thank you. Oh. Run.
not home residence. Craig speaking. Craig! Craig! Come and get me. Hurry, please. We will, Mom. We will. Where are you? Burger Dairy Store. 30 West. Road 30 West. Please hurry. Just a minute. Here's Dad. Uh, Eunice. Gunner! Gunner, please. <laughs> oh, Eunice, Eunice. Come and get me. Hurry. Oh, Gunner, please. I'll be right there. Where are you going? Well, I, to get Eunice. Craig, did you get the phone number, the, the place, the address? Yes, I got it. It's a Superette on 30 West. Superette on 30 Look, the FBI will pick her up. You don't even know where that address is, Gunner. They'll have her in a matter of minutes. Craig, call that store back and get her back on the line. Tell her I'll have someone there to pick her up in a few minutes. I'll call the office. <laughs> Calm down, Gunner. Everything's <laughs> going to be all right, right now. 30 West. It's fine. Miss, there's a telephone call for you. Mrs. Cronholm, your husband gave me the telephone. I'm Clay Brady with the FBI. Let me assure you, Mrs. Cronholm, that no one can get there faster than one of our men. Yeah, when, Mrs. When, Cronholm, when, oh, FBI, Trimbaugh? Oh, they're here. Uh, jo wait, Joseph Trimbaugh. Yes, we'll take it to your husband. Uh, all right. <laughs> It's all right, Mrs. Cronin. Come on. <laughs> the FBI's picked her up. She's fine, Gunner. She'll be here in a little while. Dad, she's made it. That's great. Look, we've prayed often these four days. God's been very present. He's answered our prayers. And we should pause and thank him for it. Lloyd, thank you for protecting Eunice. Thank you for guiding Clay in his endeavors and for giving Gunner the strength to see this through. Thank you, God. Thank you, my father. Thank you for bringing Eunice back to me. Hello, I'm Gunnar Kronholm, and what you've just witnessed is what happened to us in March of 1974. Let me introduce to you my lovely wife, Eunice. God has said that he would work all things together for good to them that loved him and those that are called according to his purpose. And he has done that through this incident, and particularly in the life of Jerry, the man that I call Jerry, who was one of the kidnappers. Not long ago, I received a letter from Jerry, who is in prison, apologizing for the terrible crime that he had committed upon me and my family. He also said that he had found God again, and he felt surely that God had forgiven him, but needed our forgiveness in order to make him a complete person again. You know, God is really a great God, and he still performs miracles. And for the thousands and thousands of you that prayed for a miracle for us, I want to thank you.